It was all gas lamplight and uh, the roads were not tarmacked, they were sort of um, dusty, very, very dusty. But then there wasn't the traffic, as I say, you, you might see a horse and cart or two horses or a carriage and a pair or something like that, but it was very, very rarely you saw a car. I mean, 1904 you used to run outside if you heard a, a noise of a car or anything like that. Tracing the map, memorising Glastonbury High Street. Part one. It was a totally different world. 1900 to the 1940s. Blanche Williams was born in Glastonbury in 1904. You see, we hadn't a lot of money and you didn't go round. Your mother ordered a thing at the weekend and there wasn't... You weren't allowed, you didn't have money to buy odd things. You, It, it was a totally different world. You cooked, you baked. I mean, if Dad gave us a penny and we ran round to the little shop in Magdalen Street, we thought we were in clover. So the impression is that at the beginning of the century, a large part of the town was more residential in appearance than commercial. Um, but the commerce was going on behind the front door, if you like. And um, more and more of the people that were living in the high street were turning to retail businesses. Not many of them, um, at the turn of the century, had large shop fronts. Um, plate glass came in fairly late in Victorian times. So the people that were cobblers or hat makers or uh, shirt makers or glove makers um, w were doing this in their houses and they might have enlarged one of the windows in their front room um, to display what they had. Well, no, I never had ice cream. I don't think ice cream was invented when I was a child. I mean, it's hard for you to realise, really, that, that all these things weren't there. They didn't come till much later on. And we just sort of lived a plain country life with the, well, the milkman coming, the bread man coming daily, and the laundry. Ailes Furniture Shop opened in 1902. It is the only surviving business on the high street from that time. I'm Robert Ailes, and we run a, a furniture and carpet retail premises in, in the high street. That's number 36 and 80 high street. My grandfather married and set up the business. He was a cabinet maker and upholsterer. Their first shop window was uh, their own bedroom suite which he'd made when they, uh, when they married. Neil Bonham came to Glastonbury in 1955. Two changes, I think, um, in the last century led to changes in the high street as we see it now. Uh, one of them was the coming of the railway and the loss of the stagecoach trade. And the other was the coming of the banks. Oh yes, yeah. you could buy everything. He feeds as a haberdasher, buying material and all sorts of... Comus the um, bakery. Collie holes of coffee. Saddlers. And barrets the bread. Several more little shops, and then there were a gun shop below the pain. Goodson's, the drapers. It was quite a good atmosphere. You know, everybody went by and said good morning. You know, sometimes when father used to go to work, 
he knew everybody. What 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 earned? They'll say what earned. You know, <laughs> that's how it used to be. Everybody spoke. You know what I mean? Oh, lovely, lovely going down with my brothers and my mother shopping, and there were so many shops then. I mean, we had uh, four butchers, uh, four or five sweet shops. You know, in in my time. There were 12, I know, where there were 12 milkmen in Glastonbury, all making a living, and a good living. All milkmen, none know. Like George Porch, Miss Goffrey, Ottens, Oliver Chalker, Adlams up, up uh, Corson And you knew everybody. The, the high street was for the people yeah. of Glastonbury then. Today, I can go down the high street and not come speak. back and not, not know anybody no, at all. No, I don't either. Oh, I'm Herbie Snook from Archer's Way, Glastonbury, born in 1920, and uh, I've lived all my life in Glastonbury. I'm Dorinda Durston, born in 1923. Um, I'm Pat Looney, but I was Pat Townhill. I was born... 21. 1921. I'm Joan Snugs, formerly Curtis. I arrived in Glastonbury on September the 6th, 1939, three days after the war was declared, with my mother and father. Right up to the war, I'd done the milk, like, part-time, you know. And then the war started, of course, naturally, I went to war, like, you know. Troops. Yeah. Yeah. Troops were stationed, they were over Checklist shops. Yeah, they everywhere. Yeah. Tanks went down the yeah. high street. Uh, other sh other places in the high street were also taken over by the army, and you could often see soldiers hanging out their heads over the top. The assembly rooms, in particular, was taken over uh, by the army. Well, if there hadn't been a war, it would have been wonderful, absolutely wonderful. The worst thing I remember is the railings being took down at St John's Church. We had a lot of evacuees, and they, some of them, came to the assembly rooms, and they had to be selected by the people who were going to receive them. It certainly Wonderful. changed Glastonbury, the war. Oh, it changed all our outlooks on life. Everything. Yeah. Because I, if you went to Bristol, I mean, you had travelled, hadn't you? I can honestly say, I mean, although the war touched us, I mean, it touched me, but uh, it, was, it was exciting as well, because until the troops came, the only boys we knew were local boys. Yes. Yeah. We're getting back to outsiders again. Yeah. Yes, one thing I can remember was after, just as the war finished... I came home on VE night and uh, we must have had quite a bit to drink. And we all collected outside St John's Church. A sailor went up the inside, climbed up inside. When they got to the top, he climbed up the pinnacle. And he tied a Union Jack on top of the... Will pinnacle. Turner. Yeah, he lives Will, on the street now. Will Turner. Yeah. And he climbed the tower and right up. And we all stood there watching him. Oh, crikey. And this flag stayed there for years until it just got torn to tatters with the wind. 